Amen. We start the series talking about God's plans uh, for us, and we start with the first call, the first purpose that is to worship God, is to place Him above everything, is to make Him the center of our lives. So, in a such way that we do not move without check God's purpose and plans for us. Don't move. Don't do anything without a prayer. Don't make plans in your lives without checking with God's plan. Our, our life is here to check His plan and align with them, to surrender to them in Jesus' name. Amen? The second purpose of every, every believer is to fellowship. We are not called to live our lives alone. As God created mankind, and then it was Adam, having a perfect relationship with God, living the paradise. Even though with all this benefit, God looked at him and says, it's not good for him to live alone. We've been created to live in fellowship. Amen? God's not looking for a person. God's looking for one people. Amen? The third one, and it was last week, the journey of maturity is about discipleship. We don't want to be eternal babies of God. We want to grow up. We want to become instrument in God's hand. And the journey is in discipleship. Amen? A journey that more and more is less of us and more of Him. Amen? Today I want to talk about the fourth purpose that every single believer should understand and live by. And it's called servanthood. We serve people, we serve God by serving others. We all are called to serve. In the modern society, we like the word volunteer, don't we? We have learned and have grown and our organizations we work with volunteers. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a volunteer. Don't take me wrong. But today I'm not talking about you being a volunteer. I'm talking about being a servant. And to clarify, just me, let me read a statement here that says, Jesus never asked his followers to give up a few hours of their day off. He did call them to give up everything for the sake of his kingdom. Fundamentally, the difference between a volunteer and a servant is the spirit in which one approaches the needs of a task. We're going to be talking about the spirit behind our response. Amen. So, let me start today by the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 or maybe from verse 8 to 10 we're going to make a bit more sense Ephesians 2 from verse 8 to 10 for by grace you've been saved through faith amen and this is not your own doing it's the gift of God not a result of work so that no one may be boast so you don't work to be saved, hallelujah. It's by grace that we are all saved, by the blood of Christ. But let's keep reading. For we are now his workmanship, hallelujah. For what? Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. So the first statement I want to make very strong here, as we are talking about God's purpose for our lives, the first purpose that we are saved, as we are called to worship God, as we are called to serve. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 is that we are served, saved by grace, now we become the workmanship of His hand for what? To enjoy life? To benefit from that? To be prayed for? No, to walk in the works that have been prepared beforehand. Beforehand, God has seen you as a servant of Him. 
And as we are all believers, you know, the most of us believe in Jesus Christ, let me go a bit deeper today. I'm going to be short but strong. Amen. I have heard this week something that excites me very much. Somebody told me, Pastor, I like when you really bang. You really go strong, you know. I think we as believers need to sometimes hear something meaty. So I'm excited about today. I've been very soft so far. But I'm going to get a bit tougher now because I was encouraged. Servanthood is not choice. Servanthood is a fruit of our salvation. If you are saved in Christ Jesus, part of the DNA of your new life is about serving. And if the same Spirit that's in Christ in us, He's going to lead us to serve. Amen. Do not resist serving. I was so blessed this week because I had the privilege to serve a brother. And the boys, the guy said, Pastor, don't share that with the women because they're going to force us to do something that maybe we are not that keen to do. Well, girls, wives, your husbands and children, because I had some young guys there also, they went there and they were doing gardens. And they do very well, actually. They can make it. If it's taking too long for them to make a home, I can tell you they can do it. But you are getting excited. To benefit from this service, you need to be part of men's group. So if you're a woman, that's not for you. <laughs> don't get too excited. But I don't know how many of us, there is a garden, there is a place that has not been cleaned for a season and the bushes they are growing all over the place and when we get there few of us they said okay it's gonna take us the whole night here and two brothers start to arrive and arrive and arrive some of them made sure they arrived quite late <laughs> but they arrived some of them arrived when they believed it was time to have our tea already Say, where is the tea? He said, no, there is some bushes around. <laughs> Start to eat the grass. <laughs> and maybe later I'm going to have some tea. But what I'm trying to bring here was probably in 30 minutes we had done a, a garden. We had broken some trees. We had cut some plants. Even farther than we should go. And it was not my fault. It was Richard's fault. <laughs> There was a little bush, there, a little plant that later heard that was a beautiful tree that in due time would come. Richard and I we saw that very dry, <laughs> didn't look good. We looked at each other and say, you know what? Let's go for it. <laughs> later, the brother said, Ooh, it was a beautiful little plant and, and flowers. He said, no, there is something new. <laughs> Let us unroot things. You gotta establish new things in your life. But anyway, the testimony here is that something that made that for one person was a lot of job, a lot of work to be done. For ten of us was half an hour. A heart of servanthood. A heart of togetherness. In no, in no time somebody was blessed. In no time a family was blessed. And no time a God changed its nature. In no time something new was created there. Why? Because there was God behind it willing to work into self. So do not hesitate when the Lord gives you opportunity to serve. James chapter 2, James chapter 2, verse 14 to 17 says what good is it my brothers if someone says he has faith but does not have words can that faith save him if a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking daily food and one of you says to them go in peace be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, 
What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. Did you get? I have faith. I believe I'm saved. I believe Christ is in me. I have someone in need and I just pray for and I send them without being fed. Which kind of faith do I have? James go even farther says, does this, say, this faith will save you? Because faith without action, faith without fruits, faith without being manifested is dead. It's all good to come to church and to celebrate salvation and say, we love the Lord. God is my Savior. He is my King. I serve Him. He is my Master. But He put place in place people for us to serve. We don't recognize God there. We remember when people, they are coming to the judgment day and Jesus is by the door and He says, when I was hungry, you didn't give me food. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was in prison and you didn't come to visit me. Do you remember what was the next phrase? Behind me. I don't know you. Yes, by your name. We prophesy in your name. We cast out demons. I never known you. But for other group of people, when they come by the door, and there he is, the master is. And he said, Welcome, beloved of my father. And they are amazed by the good news. Jesus says, When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me some water. When I was in prison, you came to visit me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was a foreigner, you welcomed me home. And they say, Jesus, when did we do that to you? And he said, when you did to my little ones. There is a question that when Jesus states, saying the two most important commandments are love your God above everything and love your neighbors and love yourself. Some of the religious people try to escape. They say, okay, surely we cannot love everyone. We cannot serve everyone. Who are my neighbors or who is my neighbor? Try to say, let me love the one that I like the most. And Jesus never responds to them. Jesus brings a parable and says that he is a man that is hurt lay on the street and the priest comes and goes to the other side and walks away a levite comes around and do the same thing until a good samaritan comes and put out oil and look after him and dresses up the wounds and put this place this, this person in a inn and pay for the costs, Jesus is asking them, not who is my neighbor, but who are you? Are you the one that is looking to help just those we love? Or you are available to help those who God is going to put in front of you? Jesus was walking constantly, and the Bible says every time you see a crowd, you say, they look like sheep without a flock, a shepherd. And you'd stop to feed them. And how Jesus would feed them? He would call his disciples and say, What do you have? <laughs> Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you a servant or you a volunteer that I need to be here or somebody else to be here? Trying to accommodate you somewhere in a ministry church. Can you just give me one Sunday every six months? Can you just help us to, to clean the church once every two years? Because you are so busy. You don't be too much. Can you just do something for us? People need to be begged for. 
Is it the heart of a servant? Is it too much for a Sunday morning? No. We are here because God has saved us. Amen. So we need to respond. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 to 24 says, Whatever you do, work heartily. As for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. When a leader, when a pastor, when an elder is asking you to do, we are not asking a favor. We are giving you opportunity for us together to serve the Lord. Amen. You don't know how embarrassing it is for me. Time to time when I need something to be done here, I feel embarrassed because sometimes I believe I need to ask for a favor. Confessing. Can I confess? Yeah. Any counselor there can help me here? <laughs> sometimes I feel frustrated. And my wife knows I rather not to ask. I rather to do myself. A lot of times you're going to see me running around because I don't like to ask. I would love people to see Confession time. Don't take us a preaching. It's just me confessing my needs, my brokenness, my limitations. And we end up always asking the same people because the same people, they're always volunteering. They're always saying, if you need something, Pastor, I'm here. And let me tell you guys, don't take me wrong, I'm stirring the church because I believe we have a very servant heart church. The most of you here today, you are here fully, and I appreciate you. But let you release something in the spirit, amen. It's a fact, not just here, it's a home, it's a work, it's a society. We need to serve our community, amen. We need to serve our town, we need to serve the nations. Pastor Joel is just coming back to visit some missionaries around Europe. There are needs out there. Sometimes we feel too small to bless other nations, but let me tell you, we are called to serve Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, into the ends of the earth. I'm going to keep going. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to keep serving the nations. Whatever we have. And sometimes we look to our bank account and say, okay, can we do that? But the trustees of this church have made a decision. We're going to give doesn't matter the cost. If it's God's vision, he'll be the provision in Jesus' name. This is the reason that sometimes you see me not preaching this platform. Not because I want to have a day off. Because somehow we believe that we as a local church, we are sending the pastor to bless other places. And I pray that I'm not the only one that's going to go. I pray that one day many of us are going to keep coming together. Hallelujah! We are called to serve in Jesus' name. I need to run. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Whatever you do, when you do for the Lord, it's not for me, it's not for New Life Church, it's not for Bishop Stoltford, it's for the Lord. Know that your work will not be in vain. In Jesus' name, amen. This week I received a message from a sister saying, Pastor, we are together, count on us. Hallelujah. And these are for people that are always serving and serving and serving. Those who serve, they are always willing to serve more. Those who are volunteering just, they look on the agenda to see if they have a spare time. Let me be a bit tougher here. God doesn't want your spare time. God doesn't want leftovers. It's a change of mindset in Jesus' name. I'm preaching myself. If you're going to receive the preaching, say, Pastor is preaching to himself. The Lord doesn't want to receive leftovers. Or you give the first, or you don't give. Or you give the best, or you don't give. The Lord is not begging. The Lord is not in need. He has given us an opportunity. Hallelujah. 
He has called us to a place of a servant and knows what faith is going to call us to be. Friends, hallelujah! Not just that we forsake servanthood, but now knowing God's heart, knowing the master's heart, we can serve him better. A lot of people, they misunderstand the verse. I don't call you more servants because the servants, they don't know the heart of the master. So they say, I don't need to serve anymore. Wrong, evil. As a friend now, you can know the master's heart so you can serve him better. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is in us to reveal the heart of the Father so I can serve Him better. A lot of people, they rest and be saved by grace. Hallelujah! Praise God! We don't deserve to be saved by grace being saved, but we rest on it. And we forget that salvation has brought us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. And if we have the Holy Spirit, now we have the heart of Jesus to be like Him. Like Him in what? What did they say? I didn't come to serve. So I didn't come to be served. I come to serve. Wow, well, what shall I do? We need to learn how to be sensitive to the needs and not to the time. I'm going to explain that. The most of us, when we are called to serve, the first thing you do is you look for your agenda, your, your calendar, to see if you have time. You don't need to lift up your hand, but be honest. When you have an opportunity to serve, the first thing you check, do I have time for that? I'm not here I'm talking about us being disorganized. I'm talking here about being sensitive to the call and not to the time. Volunteers, they are sensitive to the time. They say, if I have time, I have a spare time, I can give you a couple of hours. Too tough now, yeah? Where the pastor is going now? Every time there is an opportunity, I look. Okay, do I have time to do that? Do we have any spare time to do that? Do we have any spare money to give? A lot of us, we give from what's left over. And don't take me wrong here, we don't believe in this church, in this our theology, we don't believe in tithing by obligation, we believe in tithing by a full conscience of God's kingdom and responsibility. If you're still giving time because you believe you're stealing from the Lord and God is going to somehow curse you, let me tell you, there is so many a curse that you are under. A lot of people, they give because they believe they're going to be stealing from the Lord, so they give in obligation under fear. Wrong, God has not called you to be living under fear. You give under joy. The Holy Spirit must minister in you and need to hear from Him. If you like tithing, keep tithing in Jesus' name. But not under obligation, but under responsibility, under a covenant that you have with the Lord. But let me tell you, don't encourage you just to give out of the leftovers. Because if you're giving out of the leftovers, maybe you're not giving to the Lord. Do you really believe the Lord is begging for our money? Anything we do. I'm not talking about how much. One coin is more than thousands. It's talking about the heart. But a heart that was willing to give everything for the Lord. My time is not about how much time you can give. But it's the quality of your time. It's the heart of your time. You can give one hour of your week to serve in church, but is everything you have, the Lord is going to bless you. But some people, they can give five, but just a spare time because they have nothing to do. You know what? If there's something better, they're going to replace that. Do you get me here? Can you say amen? amen. Or you are upset already? I want to see you next week in Jesus' name. A servant gives what he gets first. A volunteer gives what he has left. A 
a servant accounts or counts what the Lord has given him. A volunteer counts how much he has given somebody else. Does this phrase make sense here? I can put better together. The volunteer always going to be counting how much he has done for somebody else. A servant always going to be counting how much the Lord has done for him. Pastor, what shall I do? We all have gifts. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10 and 11. As each has received the gift, use it to serve one another. To serve whom? Hallelujah. As good stewards of God's variety of grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks, oracles of God, whoever serves as the one who serves by his the strength that God supplies. I want to serve. I don't have much energy. Search for the Lord. The Lord is going to give you the energy to serve. In order that in everything God may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ. To Him belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Do you want to glorify the Lord? Do you want to praise Him? Do you want to manifest His love and grace? You want to manifest and ready to do what he has done for you. Be available with your gifts. Okay, pastor. My gift is preaching. But you are the only one that teaches the house. I want to have a mic. I want to sing. I want to play. I want to be on the pictures. On Tuesday when you go to the Facebook. Hallelujah. If you have the gift, praise the Lord. I want to make room to you. Even though the Bible says no man should teach, because over those who teach, the judgment is going to be different. You want to take my mic, be free. But make sure that you understand that judgment in between you and I on the sense of teaching is different. Bible, this is what the Bible says. You want to play here, arrive 9 o'clock. Like these guys arrive here and stay until 3 o'clock afternoon practicing. No one has served teas or coffees. Be on the welcome team. Or maybe swiping, sweeping, sweeping the floor. I mean, I'm being very objective here. There are so many other things helping people, blessing people. I'm just using examples here how we can stand together. How many times Melody and Nathan they used to bring their own equipment to church? Sometimes Nathan wouldn't come. I will not tell him off now, I done already. But there would be Melody with big speakers. Because they as a family decide to bless the church. Praise God. Because some people they came together, they put money together, they bought our own equipment. Hallelujah. Now we need to carry. <laughs> Time to arrive a bit earlier here to help us to set up or to go and see somebody. A few months ago, I just last week I had to call somebody to come with me to, to visit somebody. Richard, can you come? I'm available. The elders, they are not full time in the house, but they're always willing to move around, to pray for somebody, to visit. To counsel, to preach, to teach. Many of you guys, don't take me wrong, I don't mention names. I said we have a very seven church, but I should declare something far and beyond because I believe God will use us to bless this town, this nation, and the nation, and the level needs to go up. Pastor, I'm called for specific things. Do you know what's the major call of Jesus? To come and be sacrificed. He came on earth to save us. Amen? Amen? To come on the cross. But there is a picture. Matthew 20, 28. Says, even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve. And give his life as a ransom for many. The background of this Bible verse is there in John 13. It's not there. But it's the supper time. The Bible says they are having the Last Supper. We all have heard about the Last Supper, don't we? 
They are eating together. The Bible says Jesus raised from the table, the floor of the world, and took his garments and put a towel on his neck. And he said, guys, come here, I'm going to wash your feet. Let me unpack something here to you as a background, and I'm going to finish it. Jewish culture, they don't have nice shoes like mine. They have sandals like Andy. The whole day you walk in the wilderness, dust. I, miss, I see some brothers with sandals here. Praise the Lord. God is moving. Long days in the wilderness, dust on their feet. Dust in their feet. You don't have such history in your life. I have. Being a poor kid in Brazil, you don't use trainers to play around. Naked feet. There you are. I don't know how. You create such a strength and power in your You don't know about this, do you? I know British people, you go to the, to the seaside, you put socks to walk on the, the sandy. I seen you guys there. I see a, a British citizen in Brazil when by Ipanema Beach they walk in their sandals and socks. There's a brother from England. <laughs> but we in Brazil is, you know, how you call it underneath of so man is that you? We can play football on that. This is how we have the skills, we play football on that. Don't laugh, Andy. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, after walking the sand for a while, you see that dust is there. They are eating. The culture, the Jewish culture is, before you come in, somebody, the lowest servant in the house will wash your feet. Why? Because you're gonna to come to the table, but there's no table, they eat on the floor. Middle East culture. So can you imagine you eating with your foot close to the foot, full of dust? They need to wash. Understand by now? Anyway, was the lowest of the servants. Yes? Jesus doesn't invite any servant there. It's just him and 12 disciples. By the time the disciples are fighting, to see who's gonna sit closer, who is the best, who's gonna be the leader. Remember the story? So, if they are fighting to be who is the highest, nobody will take the least. So, there is no servant to watch their foot or their feet. Who on earth will say, I do that? Because whoever would say that, he would say, I'm the least here. Because they are looking for position, no one washed their feet. They came to the table with dirt feet. They are eating. The Bible says, as they are eating, Jesus stand up. Take the clothes say, I'm not here now in honor. I'm going to make myself. I'm going to put a towel around and say, I'm going to be the servant. And I'm going to be the least. Was it Jesus called to wash feet? No. He had a big ministry that the world would see him stand on the most amazing, most powerful platform ever in history, his cross. He could come straight and say, this is my ministry. But to get there, he took every single opportunity. Amen. Little lesson here. You wanna go to your platform? You wanna go to be used by the gift that you believe you have? You start to serve in every single opportunity you have. Yeah. Put your hands together and ask for Jesus and put you on. You know why the most of us you never achieve the big platforms because we despise the one that God has placed in our journey. That sometimes to see, to serve these on coffees, or to help somebody, or to sweep the floor of the church. But we don't like this, do we? Why? Because you're looking for something else. 
I volunteer in the way I want, in the day I want, in the time I want. Servanthood is a different matter. Lord, when, how, and when? You tell me, I follow. Why? Because I don't count in what I have done, but I do everything because I have received from you. If you are saved, if you understand the grace that is the undeserved work for you, this DNA is in your heart. Organically. I want to let you go home with this one. Believers, organically, they serve. And church is an opportunity for you to start. Not just, but you start. So Jesus molded the way. Finish here, the time is gone. We are all called to serve in Jesus' name. Not as volunteers, as servants. Live there, gosh. Just you can come here, live there. We are all called to serve. Because the heart of our master is the heart of the servant. We are not just volunteering church. We are recognized that somebody has called us and has given us the opportunity. Second thing, we all have gifts that should lay down to say, Lord, use me. The third thing, who shall I follow? Follow Jesus' example. He took every single opportunity. Washing feet had nothing to do with saving the world. It was modern. Me in you. He asked his disciples, Have you seen what I have done here? <laughs> Good sign. Are you a disciple of Jesus? Let's stand up together.